Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Wednesdays are Mohandas Ji days and he is here with us. And today we're going to talk about an ongoing conclave. I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, completed or it's still on. So we'll get all about it. It's called Cutting India. Somebody is dreaming up a North-South India and these are easy to whip up. These kind of passions that, you know, somebody is growing at the expense of the other. All sorts of cheap thoughts that are being peddled about by left liberals and maybe more. So let's find out all and let's welcome our guest of the evening, T.G. Mohandasi. Mohandasi, Namaskar and welcome to P. Guru's channel. Namaskaram. Thank you. Mohandasi. Yes. See this cutting India. What the heck is going on, sir? Kerala is always thinking about something odd. Uh, no, this is uh, uh, this is an old uh, wish of uh, communists as well as periyaris in uh, Tamil Nadu. There is no contribution uh, from Andhra or Telangana or Karnataka. But they are floating in this idea time and again. You know, Periyar asked for a Dravid Nadu. He wrote to British that, please don't leave India. You continue to rule India. At least you rule my Dravid Nadu, uh, if not uh, the full India. This was uh, Periyar E.V. Ramaswamy Naikar. People think uh, he was a great man. I don't know what is so great about uh, Periyar. Uh, I will uh, start with a small conversation which I, I had somewhere in 1993 in Assam with a taxi driver. I engaged a taxi for my project job in Assam. The taxi driver was the elder brother of an alpha activist, ULF. That is pronounced as uh, Alpha in Assam, Ulfa uh, in some other uh, places. Anyway, let us use that uh, Alpha, that is United Liberation Front of Assam. Now it is not there, uh, they don't work anymore. I think they were banned or something. So he asked me one question, though he was not a worker, his brother was the worker. He told me, suppose we uh, D-Link with India, we will immediately become another uh, Saudi Arabia because we have uh, oil beneath the earth and tea above the earth. We are rich in uh, minerals also. So we can be an independent nation. Those were the days of uh, just uh, after the death of uh, Rajiv Gandhi, and Rajiv Gandhi raised the slogan, Mera Bharat Mahan. He wrote everywhere, in the plane, in the bus, everywhere it was written, Mera Bharat Mahan. So he asked me, uh, Mera Bharat Mahan? what is that we are getting from Bharat? See, the biggest uh, oil uh, exploring company is ONGC. ONGC's headquarters is in uh, Deradu, not in Assam. It was, if it was in Gujarat, we would have understood Gujarat is another major producer of oil. But why they are keeping it in Deradu? Because they want to enjoy the climate of uh, Deradu, it is a tourist place. So ONGC has kept their headquarters in Deradu. And they are exploiting oil from Assam and Gujarat. Why should Assam is suffer this uh, ignominy? None of our people are getting any job in ONGC. All jobs are given to big uh, engineers, technicians, etc., etc. Assamis are getting some sweeper job unless they are highly qualified. So, altogether, we feel that uh, we are being exploited by the mainland. So, we don't have uh, anything with the mainland. We look different. Uh, we are different. So, we must segregate uh, India and Assam. So, it was a secessionist uh, talk. I didn't argue with him because my life was involved. Because uh, there was another man sitting in the car with a hand grenade in his hand. Uh, it was the first time uh, I was uh, 
uh, seeing a grenade. Till that time, I saw it only in uh, films where uh, Amitabh Bachchan, etc. used to throw it by, you know, by removing the pin by the teeth and then throwing it, then there is big explosion. This I have uh, seen in cinema. But the first time when I saw the grenade, I was really frightened. I didn't pick up an argument with that man because it was useless to argue with him. I was alone in the car. What is the point? But uh, this conversation is etched in my mind that uh, you can have uh, several logics to divide India into several pieces. That subversive tendency is there and it is being cleverly, uh, I mean, exploited by subversive forces. Now, Cutting South is a program organized by Media Academy of Kerala. Now, Media Academy falls under Public Relations Department of Government of Kerala. So this project is in turn, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it is being sponsored by Government of Kerala. I don't know whether they have given any money. As far as money is concerned, you can see the sponsors are, number one is News Laundry that is situated in New Delhi. Sitting in New Delhi, they want to cut South India. They have shown the portion in the black that includes Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, and the Telangana. These are the four states they have uh, marked, five states they have marked. Uh, so uh, News Laundry want to uh, put all these states into one basket and then remove it from India, while they themselves are located in New Delhi. News Laundry is uh, famous or rather infamous for their uh, subversive articles, news uh, items, etc. Uh, sponsor number two is a news minute of uh, Danya Rajendran. She is also known for her uh, anti-India thought and uh, writing, speeches, interviews, etc. One more uh, sponsor is there. It's uh, I don't know if it is seen in the picture. There is a bigger picture available with me. Uh, I can show that. But uh, it, uh, it's written Canada. Who from Canada? Is it Canadian government? or some NGO from Canada, nobody knows. So Canada is sponsoring, News Laundry is sponsoring, News Minute is sponsoring. And uh, I understand that uh, few journalists from uh, Latin America has attended this conference. The conference, uh, the stage was full and the capacity of the auditorium is around 1,000. Uh, Hardly 15 or 16 people were in the audience. Because of the campaign in the social media against this uh, Cutting South program, nobody dared to attend the program, including journalists themselves. Because they understood the people's emotions and uh, they could sense the trouble. So nobody attended. In fact, social media, you know, anybody can write anything. Everybody is a journalist. So people started uh, telling uh, that uh, government of India through NIA is monitoring this program. That was a big bombshell. Now, God knows whether uh, NIA was monitoring or not. Anyway, that click and uh, nobody dared to attend the program except uh, 15 or 16 people, another 10 people on the stage. But uh, on the last day, that is on 26th, uh, the Chief Minister Punarai Vijayan, he attended the program uh, through uh, online and he wished very well to the program and he made a mandatory speech also. He didn't mention anything about uh, cutting the South. But uh, we know the Fisiparous tendencies uh, of the communists, basically. Now they have matured into urban axles. But basic uh, communist theory, they don't uh, agree to nationalism. They subscribe to internationalism. They believe that India is a conglomerate of several republics. India is uh, not uh, a, a nation. And uh, you know, now the newcomer Rahul Gandhi in that camp, 
he says that union of india means that it is a union of states it is written in the constitution union of states means every state is independent and they have formed a union a working arrangement that is all. and rahul gandhi says it is a dialogue between states now 29 states are uh, conducting the dialogue tomorrow it could be 32 45 50 or 160 uh, nobody knows even rahul gandhi doesn't know so rahul gandhi is also effectively putting this uh, fisiparis uh, ideas in front of the nation saying that india is not a nation now if someone can publicly advocate the idea of cutting south you know the, they chose the word cutting it is not uh, liberating or uh, dividing or anything it is just cutting using a knife for cutting you need a knife or an axe so they want to forcibly separate these uh, five states into one uh, entity and they want to separate from india this has been openly declared there is no no fig leaf which uh, conceals this idea it is all open and uh, now i think they were do, uh, doing fb live so it must be there as a, a record lying somewhere in their uh, facebook so anybody can take and uh, listen to the lectures and the lectures were uh, ranging uh, on various subjects about the media but uh, ultimately pointing to us the need to separate south india from north india there are several reasons they also advocate now uh, three four years back uh, thomas isaac the then finance minister of kerala he called a conference of all these five states finance ministers of all these five states uh seemingly innocent movement what is wrong uh, if he is inviting all finance ministers for a conference nothing wrong with that but his intention was to form a block so that the southern states can negotiate with uh, the niti ayog and get a be- better share of the plan outlay that was his idea in fact that idea also cannot be said a bad idea you want to shout on niti ayog or the central finance ministry to get more money everybody needs money who doesn't need money every state need money but what happened was except karnataka nobody sent ministerial representative to this uh, conference so it proved to be a dam skip some finance secretary from uh, telangana attended finance secretary of tamil nadu attended so the whole meeting didn't serve the purpose and uh, it did not create any impression but that was an attempt to unite the south against the north they have a uh, logic behind that because uh, southern states are more developed than northern states now how do central government uh, divide the resources uh, when uh, you are a backward state with more population more money will be allotted to you so that you can come forward already developed states like gujarat maharashtra kerala uh, even tamil nadu they will get lesser share because you are already developed this is the logic this was agreed upon this formula was agreed upon by everybody now what is happening is the developed states feel that we are being punished merely because we are developed the other uh, states are not developed so they are being pampered so the, uh, the uh, there was a noble uh, intention behind the formula but the noble intention is gone now now it is being misinterpreted as favoritism now they show the take the example of uh, uttar pradesh uttar pradesh is not so developed compared to gujarat or tamil nadu and uttar pradesh is having uh, around uh, 
26 lakhs of uh, crores of population. So there is more population and less development. So major share goes to Uttar Pradesh, goes to Yogi Adityanath. And think about Punarai Vijayan. Kerala is always trumpeting that we are number one, we are number one, we are number one. Okay, merely because you are number one, you are getting lesser share. And you are... Uh, number one in what? Number one less. in what, sir? Sir, 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 one second. Number one in what? Number one in uh, every field. That is what they claim. Where? In in uh, education, in industrial output, in agricultural output. Uh, sir, sir, then, sir. Uh, you know, certain I, I, indexes are there. I, I, I read this thing about education. India, they consider somebody as being educated if they can sign their name, not Anguta Cha. I hope that is not the logic being used. Kya hota hai? You create a trap for yourself to fall. This is what happened with Kerala. Kerala said, oh, we are number one in education. Not in education. You are number one in literacy. Now, how is literacy measured? The people between the age of 5 and 60, 90% of such population, if they know how to count from 0 to 9, it is declared literate. Oh, your literacy rate is 99%. Okay, 99% of your population or 90% of your 99% population, they know to count from 0 to 9. This is all what is meant by literacy. And you go on trumpeting it. You create an impression that you are uh, one of the most advanced state in the world. You go to United Nations, even United Nations uh, treat you as a separate uh, country. Because uh, if they uh, put out statistics of uh, COVID-19, they write uh, Australia, New Zealand, Kerala, India, Pakistan. Are both okay, you are uh, recognized as a separate country and they celebrate here that Kerala is number two, Kerala is number three, etc. Et and there are some complicated indices also. The uh, what is that? Uh, uh, the uh, the vit uh, vitamins admitted to a child below the age of three, etc. This type of uh, nonsensical formulas which are uh, uh, produced by United Nations uh, uh, UNHRC. Uh, they they give this type of statistics. Very complex thing to understand. And in all these indices, Kerala is number one. So they go on uh, advertise that uh, Kerala is number one, number one. And Kerala's population is hardly four crores. It has not yet touched four crores, just below four crores. So uh, you get, naturally, you get a, a smaller share of the uh, total revenue. This is what is happening. Now, since we are getting lesser revenue, we invite uh, other uh, southern states also uh, who feel that they are getting lesser revenue and then try to make a consortium sort of thing so that you can negotiate with the central government and uh, ultimately you will reach a point uh, saying that we don't want to continue in this union and we are walking out. This is their idea. Now this idea they are testing through their own media friends that was uh, cutting south program. Now how government of India is going to react to this type of mischief I don't know. But uh, this is not a small thing to be ignored because this is happening in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu also. Because uh, since the time uh, of Peria, this started. After that, it uh, subsided somehow. And uh, uh, whatever you, uh, be your uh, uh, criticism of Congress, Kamaraj was a nationalist. He brought nationalism back to uh, Tamil Nadu. And once uh, Congress was decimated, only DNK and the ADNK remained. No other uh, national party was having any sort of hold in Tamil Nadu. And you know, they lost power, uh, I think, in uh, from 1962 onwards. 67. No sir. national party has governed 67. Tamil Nadu. 67, sir. 67. 67. 67. 
no national party has governed tamil nadu and whatever party so many splits took place dk became dmk and aadmk then mdmk by vico uh, all these splinter groups they also uh, declare that uh, this uh, dravid nadu is a separate thing we have a separate culture our language is separate all sorts of separatism arguments were coming from tamil nadu also kerala tamil nadu now uh, karnataka and andhra has not positively responded to this type of activity but uh, in uh, um, uh, within no time the campaign and the narrative being peddled in uh, south they may also fall for this trap and it will become a big headache for uh, the government of india to uh, handle with i think uh, probably the karnataka elections will be a test dose of this you know the uh, 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 just carefully watch what will be the narrative which is going to be uh, uh, said or peddled or put forth by congress and janata dal in karnataka it all depends probably they will put forth this uh, idea of separate uh, karnataka also this may happen so i think this is a very serious development which should not be ignored at all by uh, uh, nationalist uh, people thank you thank you so much mohandas ji and i just want to tell our viewers i don't know how many of you know this fact you know the city of coimbatore is supposed to be one of the most in i think i would say it is the most industrialized city in tamil nadu it is the second biggest city in tamil nadu and it is about 35 to 40 kilometers from the kerala border right outside the border is a town called palakkad in this 40 kilometer range more as the i think i've seen close to 50 colleges 50 all these colleges the student body population is you know what they are all from kerala 95% maybe these colleges cater exclusively to the student population of kerala if kerala says they are 100% literate how come they don't have any colleges there are buses that ply from palakkad because there are many day scholars also there are also uh, you know uh, hostel scholars and and clearly you know coimbatore is now also you know uh, dealing with uh, laujihad because that part has spilled into tamil nadu also it it the, the kerala is a failed state in terms of governance god's own currency has ruined it and and you know what i mean by god's own currency if you don't understand look at the poster on my back it continues to do well it is continuing to sell well and and this is the state of affairs of kerala kerala has you know literally plumbing the de- depths from where it used to be the, the travanco kingdom had guaranteed rights of education to everybody Ke- correct me if i'm wrong monda ji i thought kerala and the kingdom of mysore the kingdom of travanco and the kingdom of mysore were one of two of the most progressive states up to independence isn't it uh that is true but you know while state reorganization was taking place uh bk krishna menon told uh, jawarlal nehru and rajagopal acharya that if you form kerala that will go under communist rule now nehru said uh, i know that but there are no takers for kerala i spoke to mysuru as well as uh, madras both were presidencies at that time there was no karnataka or tamil nadu they came uh, into existence later on kerala came into existence in 1956 nehru said uh, karnataka is ready to absorb uh, up to kasar board but not beyond that tamil nadu is ready to accept uh, the kanyakumari district but not beyond that so what can i do we have to uh, make a kerala state i know the dangers involved finally they decided that let kanyakumari district go to tamil nadu let kasar board remain with uh, kerala in fact in 1967 karnataka raised a demand that kasar board district should be given to them there was a big agitation somehow it uh, subsided 
and now uh, it's not there like uh, you know uh, there is a dispute between uh, karnataka and maharashtra on the district of uh, belagavi 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 uh, belagavi, belagavi. Uh, previously it was called belgaum now it is belagavi so that dispute was there uh, so kerala was formed uh, to the uh, not so happy it was not a happy decision of jawaharlal nehru but uh, he had to do that out of uh, compulsion he knew very well that it will go to uh, communists and in, it went to communists 56 kerala was formed and in 1957 the first uh, election uh, was won by communists and then it was oscillating between congress and communists but then uh, congress was slowly uh, what you call communitarist uh, i must say we must find out some word that everybody becoming communist you may be holding a congress flag in your uh, hand but you are a communist in your thinking you are holding a bjp flag in your hand but you are a communist in your thinking this process has taken place in kerala in a dangerous space so that whichever government comes to the power uh, they behave uh, uh, as if they are communist and they put forth the agenda uh, of communists this is because communists are so clever that they always invest in the system not only in the politics they invest in the system so education system the bureaucratic system the law and order machinery the judiciary everything is under communist uh, influence so government jo bhi ho system in karata hai or government ke mathe par bhi they have no brains they will have only communist brains therefore the communist hegemony is not successfully challenged either by congress or by bjp in kerala both are in uh, reactive mode uh, communists will do something and these people will uh, start shouting they have no agenda of uh, their own that that causes their failure now this is the second time communists have won probably they will won the third time also that is the current uh, situation you wanted to ask something sir yes sir a couple of couple of observations i'm sorry i, I thought i'll just give you a break because i want to make a couple of observations i mean viewers you know kerala is such a bundle of contradictions there was this guy called kodiyeri balakrishnan who was i think the number 2 or he was the opponent of uh, pinarayi vijayan both are raging communists we know that you know kodiyeri balakrishnan is alleged to have done shatru samhar of yagnas back and again and again and again and again this is a yagna you do for the destruction of your rival i wonder who he was trying to destroy he got destroyed in the middle sorry poor man is no more but my point sir is you guys i mean not you I mean, the the cpm guys you guys are raging hypocrites you said there is no god outside inside you are doing all pujas all tantras all sorts of stuff i mean i i can i just gave you this one example to show what kind of hypocrisy exists in kerala and sir the reason why cpm will keep coming back is not because of mr pinarayi vijayan it is because of his son in law who apparently seems to have united all the muslims to go with the marxists that's how i see it sir correct me if i'm wrong and uh, that is true that is to see they change their color to suit the atmosphere uh and they are successfully doing it without being challenged by the opposition parties because the opposition parties are uh, i mean some sort of communists only thing their flags are uh, different their thinking is similar now uh, nobody from congress or bjp will dare question communists on their land reforms land reforms in kerala is an absolute failure because the production has gone down like anything land reforms a major land reforms uh, 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 took place in 1971 after that the uh, rice coconut uh, rubber everything came down but nobody uh, will say that production has come down your land reforms were uh, wrong it was not to be done but no even bjp will say that land reforms was a very good thing 
but now communist party has changed they don't do land reforms therefore we will do it for you etc etc so they they want to be a better communist than the uh, existing communist rule this is what is happening this is how they have uh, brainwashed people into their uh, thinking therefore even if some other party is coming you will not find any change whatsoever on the ground level Sir, I also find that the Hindu community of Kerala to be a bundle of contradictions. They want tradition. Like when the Ayappa ruling came from Supreme Court, to a woman, they all said that we will wait. Fair enough. But when it came election time, not a single BJP candidate won. Who was the person who was for Hindutva? I mean, I, I guess you are, you are right in that, you know, these people are just shades of communism. And, and somewhere, somebody needs to emerge out of that and say, listen, knuckleheads, this is not what BJP stands for. Basically, what I'm trying to hint at is Kerala has an anomaly. They are too blind to notice him. Go ahead, sir. Uh, see, uh, what happened in uh, Sabrimala, so it was a spur of the moment decision by BJP or the Sangha Parivar. Because the public sentiment was uh, like that. Now, public voted, uh, according to me, public voted correctly. They were angry with Panrai Vijayan. Now, to successfully register their anger, they have to vote for Congress. Because if they are voting BJP, BJP has not crossed the threshold level even uh, now in Kerala politics. Therefore, if they vote BJP, BJP may garner few more votes. They may not win. There is a likelihood of uh, defeat also. So it is altogether important that we vote Congress to teach a lesson to Pilarai. This was the logic of common man. And they did overwhelmingly uh, uh, vote for uh, uh, Congress. And Congress uh, swept away 19 out of 20 seats. This was not because they are angry with BJP. They want to teach a lesson to Pinarayi for which there was no other method but to vote uh, Congress. This is what uh, happened during that period. I will not uh, blame them for that because uh, their logic, the, there, was, uh, there was some uh, logic in their uh, thinking. You cannot deny that. Whatever that is, sir, you know, um, too many contradictions is how I see it. You know, there are people who are most erudite. Your movies are of the best quality. I have to say this. Kerala movies are, are up right there. Your movies, your literature, the thinking, the intellectuals, amazing, amazing intellectual talent. Except on the ground, I don't see much change. There is progress. It's not like Kerala is, you know, backward or anything like that. Yet, I, I, I urge all our viewers, anybody who travels by road, you can see the difference when you exit Karnataka and get into Kerala or when you exit Tamil Nadu and get into Kerala. Just look at the difference and you will know what I'm talking about. There is so much wealth of talent and yet somehow it doesn't translate itself into something where the system is more vibrant. You know, I, I was uh, traveling with Dr. Swami recently and I pointed it out to him that Kochi International Airport is one of the few international airports that sources its own power because it's got a huge solar farm just al alongside the airport. You probably know this thing, Mohandas Ji. So there are some things that are bright spots. But the point I'm trying to make is why is this great state not realizing its potential? Uh. <laughs> I, I will tell you one reason. It is a curse by Shankaracharya. He didn't curse Kerala openly. But you know, Kerala was one state who disowned Shankaracharya. Kerala is known as uh, Shankaracharya's land, holy land, this, that. Now there is a mud, there is a big uh, memorial tower, etc. It is all made uh, some 50 years uh, back, not beyond that. What happened to Adi Shankara? He was expelled from his uh, community. 
no one was there to uh, support him that is why he left kerala you know can you imagine the brain of adi shankar it was uh, it was equal to some 10 albert einstein or 20 albert einstein put together that was his brain but he was uh, mercilessly thrown out of his community for what you know you cannot become a sanyasi unless you go through the uh, process of brahmacharya garhastya vana prastha and then sanyasa that is the rule you cannot be a brahmachari and directly jump to sanyasa with this logic he was excommunicated from his uh, family and community nobody was to take care of him he didn't budge an inch he went outside and he became adishankara even then kerala did, didn't uh, accept him kerala accepted the uh, madhva and uh, subsequently lokayata all these things but not shankara the advaita philosophy was uh, adopted uh, later on by uh, narayana guru uh, he lived uh, he, his samadhi was in 1928 so imagine how many years uh, kerala was ignoring shankara nobody was there to follow him it was narayana guru who publicly uh, uh, he worshiped shankara not only that he tread in the path of shankara so i think shankara might have uh, cursed kerala his own country that uh, you disown me when i was a boy you threw me away from the uh, family from the community and the history says that shankara came back when he saw uh, mother uh, died and there was nobody to help him to cremate his mother he did it alone adi shankara did the cremation of his mother alone nobody was there to help putting one by one wooden log then lifting his uh, uh, dead body of his mother with his own hands somehow placing it on the funeral pyre and shankara lit this was the, the uh, what you call uh, something horrendous to be done by a society to a great man like adi shankara and now the same society oh they say that adi shankara belongs to us he born here are kya kya kiya tumne kuch nahi kiya kuch nahi and you know they created a university in the name of adi shankara and uh, it's a normal university nothing special about that you can create a building and put a name adi shankara's name and uh, some request was uh, sent to uh, adal bihari vajpayee when he was prime minister to name uh, kochi airport as adi shankara airport i don't know for, uh, what purpose but uh, that was not considered by government of india you know kochi airport is very near to kaladi that is yes, adi shankara's yes. place so this is what kerala did to adi shankara and i think uh, adi shankara might have definitely he might have cursed this place and that is why we are suffering now thank you well very interesting sir and uh, viewers uh, unfortunately we can't take any questions today uh, we uh, i don't know mohandas ji do you want to take some questions do you have time or uh... Uh, i have time no problem okay uh maybe we can there, there are some questions with ask tg viewers we you know you know the procedure now you we kind of give you the hashtag put ask tg and i think there are a few questions we'll try and accommodate those let's let's go back just give us a second while we go back and locate those things here's the first one srinivas jayaprakash wants to know why haven't successive central governments taken step to set up supreme court benches in south northeast and western india doesn't concentration of power in delhi affect the psyche of people now uh, see the supreme court is uh, no, uh, is a constitutional court of course high court is also a constitutional court but supreme court is envisaged to handle cases uh, of extreme constitutional importance as well as dispute between states and states and center the uh, our supreme court came into existence in 1950 
Before that, we had only high courts. After that, there is a Privy Council, which was in England. It was not in India. That was uh, under British. After became, uh, we became uh, independent, we thought of uh, forming a Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court came into being in 1950, January 26, the day of our Republic. That means after the Constitution came into existence. So Supreme Court is a creation of the Constitution. It is meant to, basically meant to uh, decide cases between states and between center and states and cases involving uh, acute, very serious constitutional issues. Otherwise, all other things are to be settled in high court. Now, slowly what happened was Supreme Court uh, wanted to register their importance also and politician wants to drag their cases. So they made a special provision that is called special leave petition. That is why you see in uh, news, etc., uh, so-and-so has filed an SLP. What is this SLP? It is special leave petition. Because the statute says that you have to take a permission from the High Court to come to Supreme Court with an appeal. Now, Supreme Court made a shortcut that somebody can directly approach us, ignoring the High Court. And we will decide whether to entertain that petition or not. So indirectly usurping the powers of high court. And uh, in constitution, there is another uh, provision given that if your fundamental rights are uh, then taken away by the state, you can directly approach high court or Supreme Court. Now, everybody want to approach Supreme Court because uh, you have money, you have big advocates, you get uh, this uh, news value in the media. So you are going to Supreme Court. So slowly what happened, cases started accumulating. Now Supreme Court doesn't know what to do. In between, in 1987, Justice P.N. Bhagavati brought this, uh, uh, this uh, public interest litigation also. Till that time, how was the case? If I have some grievance against Sri Iyer, I go to court against Sri Iyer. If Sri Ayer is uh, acquiring public land or he is uh, taking away public money, I cannot question that because I am not directly affected. So court used to say that you don't have local standing to come to this court because you are not directly aggrieved by Sri Ayer. But in 1987, Justice P.N. Bhagavati said that no, there has to be a voice to the voiceless. What about scheduled cash and scheduled drive? They, they don't even know that they are being exploited. So somebody has to file a case uh, on behalf of them. They have started this PIL. Now everything is PIL. Every day, Supreme Court is flooded with PIL, PIL. High Court is flooded with PIL. In fact, I have stopped filing PIL in Kerala High Court because you know there will be hundreds of parallel petitions. The moment you file the uh, uh, your uh, litigation, people take photocopies of that and affix their uh, name and submit it in their name also so that uh, even my name will not be mentioned in the judgment. His name will be mentioned. All these parallel petitions, parasitic petitions, everything has started. So I stopped going to uh, Kerala. This is the situation. This is how our uh, Supreme Court has come. Now, if you uh, multiply the Supreme Court, you have a Supreme Court in Tamil Nadu, Hyderabad, Trivandrum, etc. There also the cases will pile up. You, 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 your number of cases will go up if you have more benches. So better have only one bench. At least your headache will be less. Thank you. Next question from Shaji VK uh, about police attacked some people at temple functions in Thiruvananthapuram on 6, 26th March. Can you elaborate on that incident, sir? I am not aware of I am not aware. I don't know. Hrithik Great wants to know, what is the level of penetration of Chinese influence in Indian media? Oh, I am not capable of answering that question. It's all. There are a lot of information uh, roaming around. You can uh, find it through Google search. 
but uh, uh, I don't think uh, the Kerala media is directly influenced by uh, Chinese forces. Maybe indirectly they are financing someone in Saudi Arabia or in France or Canada. And then from there, money comes here. As you know, now the money is coming through various routes because the uh, government of India is uh, very closely monitoring FCRA conditions. So it is very difficult to bring in uh, donations as such. So they bring in uh, through subscription. Now, how news laundry is being run? They make subscribers. So government cannot do anything. Anybody can subscribe a web portal from anywhere in the world. And they make money uh, and they run their uh, business. Likewise, it is very difficult to say that a particular party has financed uh, another particular party. So uh, I, at least I don't have uh, any tangible evidence of uh, Chinese intrusion into Kerala media. I will not make any remark about other media. Now, could you go back to the previous question? I have something to add. Rithik, Rithik question, HRTK. Yes, sir. Anyway, that's okay if you if it's difficult. Um, Rithik, a lot of things that the Modi government has done, I, I really tip my hat to them. For example, it takes a lot of testicular gravitas to do what they did, banning the Chinese app, 132 apps, including TikTok in India. Today, even today in the United States, United States is unable to do that because some of the youth icons such as the Alexandria O. Cortez, AOC she's called, she has said, told, told the Democratic Party that if we ban TikTok, then we will alienate the youth segment of the country, which is completely with us because that is the woke mentality that they have developed. And, and therefore, the Democrats are still, uh, you know, pondering over this. The Federal Commission, FCC, Communications Commission, FCC, its commissioner has written to uh, Google and to Apple CEOs telling, please stop putting this app on your uh, App Store slash uh, Google Play Store because we know that the data is being leaked from TikTok and you are being profiled in China. And, and the reason for that, we have done many videos with Elmer Yuan. You are welcome to go see that. Nobody seems to understand the big picture in the United States. United States is so-called greatest country in the in the world, right? These people don't want to accept the truth. China has permeated in U.S. in so many levels. There are some states now passing legislation that says that you cannot own, foreign countries cannot own land in our state. That is the amount of permeation. I live in a place called Bay Area. I bet you. Most of the office space today, whatever has changed hands, the buyer is almost always the same person from the same country. I'm sorry, not same person, from, from the same country. And, and it, it's not easy, guys. And the, the money is no object. There is so much flight of capital that has taken place from China in the last two, three years. They just wanted some areas. Boston area, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, Seattle, Vancouver. I'm just giving you five places where there is massive money sloshing about. Serious problems. India is not as badly affected by China as it as the United States is. Anyway, I just wanted to set the record straight. I may criticize the Modi government on some things, but on these things, I really tipped my hat to them. It took a lot of guts to ban those apps. Those were really, really... Also, a lot of online apps in India. The Chinese manufacturers of cell phones in India... These people are trying to find clever ways to not pay taxes on the money they are making in India. All these things are written in pgurus.com. Please read the articles. Oppo, OPPO, um, Xiaomi, all these big guys don't want to pay taxes in India. They create some new thing saying that, oh, we have to transfer intellectual property rights to this country and then it goes through Dubai and it just disappears into tax havens. I mean, India is really cracking down uh, enforcement directorate. Also, there's an online betting company that got raided yesterday. I think that news came in pgurus.com. There's a video that will be coming in the next couple of days. Just understand how much the Modi government is working and how many people they are battling inside India. Forget about outside. It's not easy. India's enemies are inside, more inside than outside. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. 
Next question. Uh, any update on Viringium port? Will it change the topography of Trivandrum? Topography of Trivandrum. What do you mean by this? Not topography. I think he wants demography. He means demography, sir. I think demography. Now, yeah. demography, uh, of course, demography of uh, whole Kerala is being changed in a very fast pace. Trivandrum is also included in that. Uh, so, I think uh, now uh, the Muslim population in uh, Kerala must be hovering around 35, 36 percent. Christians have miserably gone down. They are only 17 or 18 percent now. And Hindus also have uh, come down by maybe 47 or 48 percent. That is my guess because uh, census figures are not available uh, since 2011. So, Trivandrum also will uh, change its uh, demography. That's all. I think uh, one more question and be closer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the last question, guys. Raghunandan wants to know, this separatism has been seeded by church and this church has been supported by USA and Europe and there will be a terrorism movement in TN. Sir, your view on it. Uh, no, I don't subscribe to that view. There is uh, no tangible evidence to accuse church as far as separatism is concerned. Separatism is financed by a uh, few people as Soros said openly that uh, uh, he is going to destroy nationalism wherever it is. And he has kept some uh, billions of dollars. Now you can argue that uh, Soros is a Christian, therefore church might, might be behind that, etc. But uh, as on date, there is no tangible evidence that church is financing uh, anti-national activities. They may be financing uh, here and there some few elements they may be protecting, but there is no uh, not a grand design as of now by church. Well, one thing that always amazes me, uh, Mohandas Ji, you walk by any church area or Christian institutions, the walls will be clean. No paper, no poster, no defacing, nothing. The next building will not be that. And immediately you see all this, uh, you know, how do they manage to do it, sir? I mean, if Hindus want to say that, you know, we should stop this conversion, why can't the Hindu organizations also make sure that they maintain their premises cleanly? Uh, that's because, you see, these two are proselytizing uh, religions. So they become violent uh, if they're... Uh, some, some trouble is being made, they make disproportionate noise. While Hindus are not proselytizing and not religion in the strict sense of the English term. So Hindus are uh, soft and considered to be soft also. So you can do some vandalism in uh, Hindu temples, unlike uh, Christian uh, church or Muslim mosque. Uh, that's why all these are happening. So either Hindus also start uh, behave like uh, Islam or Christianity, which is my biggest uh, worst case dream. I don't want any Hindu to become uh, uh, an Islamist-like uh, character wherein you get angry with uh, everybody, everything. If somebody draws a picture, then you kill him. Somebody sings a song, you kill him. Are kya? Then is it a Hindu? No, Hindu has to be Hindu. And bring these fools to their uh, knees. Make them understand, make them tolerant. If they don't listen, make them listen. That is the only way. Not that How do you I make them listen? Sir, sir. The biggest challenge here is how do you make them listen when from an age of five, they are being indoctrinated that your religion tells you to kill every non-believer? Uh, anyway, that, that uh, deserves a bigger or lengthy answer. Uh, that, that process is going on in India. Uh, I can uh, explain you at some other time. Let's close for now. 
Thank you so much, sir. And uh, viewers, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Also, please follow Mohandas Ji on Twitter. His handle is at Mohandas TG. And also, please follow me at Sri Iyer One. And uh, we are going to be doing more things. Both of us are active on Twitter Spaces, where you can actually participate and ask questions and have those answered in real time. So you can even have follow-up questions and so on. Much more interactive. That's a medium called Twitter Spaces. Uh, Mohandas Ji is a frequenter there, and so am I. So we would love to, you know, listen to you, talk to you more. Not just one question, one answer, and then move on to the next person. Thank you very much, sir. Namaskar.